Hello there, this is Rahul and in today's session we are going to talk about Terraform state. So the topics for today's discussion is what is Terraform state and how to use Terraform state inside your Terraform projects. Apart from that, we are also going to look how to manage your Terraform state and what are the best practices. And along with that, we are also going to look on like what is Terraform local state and what is Terraform remote state. And to demonstrate that, we are going to see a demo where we are going to push a local Terraform state into AWS S3 bucket. If you are new to this channel and if you are just getting started with the Terraform, then I'll put the link of my previous session which I have uploaded for Terraform into the description section. So feel free to uh, go through those sessions so that you can understand those concepts really well. All right, let's switch over to my desktop. The first question comes in my mind is like how the Terraform state file is created or do we need to create a Terraform state file? So to answer that, like you can see in this diagram on the left hand side, we have a Terraform plan command. And apart from that, you can also see there are Terraform init and Terraform apply command, which we generally use. So Terraform state file is not created by us, but instead it is created by Terraform. So whenever you execute Terraform plan on the left hand side, you can see or Terraform apply command, then this Terraform state file is created. So in the middle, you can see in the red color, this is my Terraform state file. And it contains all the resource information in the form of metadata. And this Terraform state file is uh, created onto your local workspace. So it is created by Terraform, not by you. And it is created along with your project onto your local workspace. And after that, uh, all the changes, if you have executed Terraform apply command, then uh, first it will create a Terraform state file. And then after it will apply all the changes to your AWS infrastructure or a Google Cloud infrastructure in case you are using Google, or in case if you are using Azure, then it will apply it to Azure. So this is the typical flow of our Terraform uh, apply or Terraform plan command. And whenever you execute these commands, then this Terraform state file is created by Terraform and it just happens uh, like in the back end. You don't see it, but we can actually see the Terraform state file. Now we know the basics of Terraform state file. Let's see a little demo where we are going to create a Terraform state file. So uh, this is my workspace and I'll put the link of this workspace into the uh, description section. It's a GitHub project, so I'll put the GitHub link. So this is my uh, Terraform state file uh, project, which I have created. It's a very small one. So here I have defined the provider with the reason, access key and secret key. And this is my variable where I'm storing the access key and secret key. But this is my main Terraform file where I'm just creating an EC2 instance uh, of T2 micro onto my AWS account. So this is the project Terraform remote state. And here I have only a couple of files, main.tf and variable.tf. So in this project, uh, this is a fresh project. I haven't done anything yet. So once I'll issue the Terraform uh, uh, plan or Terraform apply command, then we are going to create a Terraform state file. Not we, but Terraform is going to create a Terraform state file. So that's the first step uh, that how the Terraform state file is created. Let's open the terminal from here go to new terminal and i'll just extend it over here I'll clear the screen and let's check the directory so we should go into terraform remote state project i'll clear the screen and i'll also issue the command expo ps1 so that i can reduce the length of this command line it's too annoying sometimes ah, let's put a dollar okay clear so now uh, this is my terminal and this is my project and I'm inside the directory Terraform remote state. So the first command which I'm going to run is Terraform init. You might have noticed that once I issued the Terraform init command, I'm in this command, uh, it has downloaded uh, some dependencies. So if you look into the Terraform file, this is our provider and the provider is AWS. So whenever we issue Terraform init command, then it downloads all the dependency which is needed for AWS. So here it has created a directory dot Terraform and inside that you will find a file uh, which, which has been downloaded uh, by Terraform init command. So that's the first step uh, once we issue the Terraform init command. But uh, still we haven't created or uh, Terraform haven't created a Terraform state file. So I'll clear the screen over here. And the next command which we are going to issue is Terraform plan command. Okay, so Terraform plan command says it is going to create or add one resource. 
so after that uh, we are going to create or we are going to create the resource using the next command that is uh, terraform apply type yes okay so now terraform apply command has just finished and we have successfully started an ec2 instance and now where is the terraform state file so here you can see uh, this is the terraform state file which has been created so once you issue your final terraform apply command then this terraform state file is being created and uh, this is done by terraform it is not that we are creating this terraform state file but it is just by default created by terraform and it, it contains all the metadata information which is like uh, which we have specified into the main.tf file so this is the information related to the current uh, main.tf file so here you can see this is the ami which we are planning to or which we are starting to create on aws and this is the ec2 which is running on eu central region so there are lots of information which is available inside this terraform state file and uh, this is just created by terraform by itself so this is the terraform state file over here and this terraform state file exists locally onto your terraform workspace so that's why this terraform state file is known as local terraform state file because it is just local to you you have not shared with any of your colleague or any of your team member so that's why we call this uh, terraform state file as a local terraform state file so what happens is like whenever you execute any command onto your terraform project so i'll clear the screen so let's say if i execute terraform destroy command then again it is going to update the terraform state file because uh, terraform state file is just like a recorder or a black box for a terraform where it records all the steps which we are going to perform so the first thing which we need to do is to create a terraform state file is you need to execute terraform apply command so once you execute the terraform apply command this terraform state file will be created if this is your fresh project so this was my first project fr fresh project that's why i have uh, it has created a terraform tf state file now after that after creation of the terraform state file whenever i execute any new command so let's say i have executed terraform destroy command so it is simply gonna update the terraform state file because it is just updating the meta information related to my main.tf file so that's why uh, for each step uh, it's act as a recorder so it's just like a black box for this terraform project and it's going to keep on recording whatever happening inside my terraform project so if you are updating deleting or destroying anything then it will just keep the information into the terraform state file and also it is going to apply on uh, actual aws uh, uh, cloud infrastructure also all right, so now I have destroyed my Terraform uh, resource or EC2 resource, which was running on EC2, oh, sorry, on AWS. So let's see the Terraform state file once again and uh, verify our uh, changes. So here, this is my Terraform state file. And as you can see, it has uh, like it has shrunken quite a lot. Now it contains very limited information. So previously, uh, before issuing the Terraform destroy command, it has a lot of information because during that time we were trying to create a uh, ec2 instance onto aws but now we have destroyed it so it has removed all the information uh, related to our ec2 instance which we were which we have created previously so now you can say like a terraform state file is updated every time whenever you issue or do any kind of activity and activity what it's mean is like a terraform apply terraform destroy i mean anything which you do on your resources using terraform all right so that was the first part where we have seen how to create a terraform state file and how to create and store that terraform state file locally onto your workspace the next part which we are going to see like how to store the same file remotely onto s3 bucket so we are going to create an s3 bucket and inside that s3 bucket we are going to store this terraform state file and that all we are going to do with the same terraform script uh, we are not going to do anything manually everything we are going to do we are going to create the terraform state file and we are going to store the terraform state file onto s3 bucket via terraform all right so this is my uh, the same main.tf file and previously i have disabled the remote se uh, section of my terraform script so where i have uh, mentioned like what is the backend that is s3 so i'm just going to enable this section because previously we were uh, only interested in creating a local terraform state file so i'm just going to save it and here there are a couple of things which i would like to mention so whenever you're trying to store the uh, state file remotely on the s3 bucket then you need to define the resource into the terraform 
uh, main.tf file. So here uh, we have defined the block that is Terraform and that block is backend and it is using the S3 bucket and then you need to specify the name of the bucket. So this is the bucket which uh, I'll, I'll be creating on my AWS account and this is the key. So this key is little special. So assume this as a, a, a directory inside a S3 bucket. So how do you store a file inside your computer? So what you do, you just create a directory and inside that directory, you store some file. So similarly, uh, this is the bucket and inside that bucket, we are going to create a key, which we call it, but it's, it's, it's assumed that it's a directory and inside the directory, we are just going to store the Terraform state file. And apart from that, we also need to mention the reason. So in which region you are working. So in which region you are going to create this uh, S3 bucket. So again, we are just going to create it into the same region that is EU central one. All right. So now we have enabled this, uh, just save it and also take a look at this uh, Terraform state file. I think it should be, uh, yeah, because we have previously destroyed uh, all the resources which we have created. Uh, that's why this uh, file is quite shrunken a lot. Uh, one more thing, uh, we need to create this S3 bucket uh, before running this uh, uh, Terraform apply command or before running or executing this uh, main.tf file. So this is my, I can show you my AWS account. So this is my AWS account and here I have already created an S3 bucket. So the name should be same, otherwise you might get uh, into some error. And the creation of S3 bucket is pretty simple. You can simply go here and type S3 and it will uh, give you an option for S3. And then once you click on this S3, then it will uh, di redirect you to this home page. And here you can just click on this orange button that is cre create bucket and it will help you to create a uh, bucket. So this is how I have already created an S3 bucket. And after that, uh, this is my Terraform project. I think, yeah, this is the one. So now I'll clear the screen over here and I'm simply gonna execute the command Terraform apply oh, it's giving me an error backend initialization require run terraform init so i'm just going to run the terraform init command once again so terraform init because we have previously destroyed all the resources that's why it is asking me to rerun the terraform init command okay then i can run the terraform uh, plan command also just to see Okay, it is going to create a one uh, or add one resource. That's fine. I'll clear the screen and then I'm just going to run the Terraform apply command. Type yes. Now my Terraform apply command has just finished and we can first see the Terraform state file and uh, I'll just reopen it maybe. Okay. Ah, sorry. I forgot to mention. Yes, we are creating this uh, a remote uh, Terraform state file. That's why it has not updated this local state file. So uh, let's get back to our AWS console over here and I'm just going to refresh it. Uh, click on this bucket and here you can see this is the key. This is the directory uh, which I mentioned you earlier. So here uh, this is the bucket. Uh, this is the key. So key is just like a folder inside your bucket and inside that the uh, folder it is going to create a terraform tf state file so this is the folder click on it and here you will find terraform state file so this is the terraform state file which we have stored remotely onto our s3 uh, bucket so uh, this is how you are going to create a remote terraform state file where we are going to save the same terraform state file instead of locally we are going to store it remotely so this is how you create a terraform remote state file now the question comes like uh, if you are having a Terraform state file locally, then why do you need to store the Terraform state file remote? So consider a scenario you are working in a company where lots of developers are working on our same Terraform project. And as you know, if you have messed up your Terraform state file, then you are not able to execute any of your command because your Terraform state file is not uh, properly synced. So if uh, multiple developers are working on the same uh, Terraform file. Like in our case, we had created a main.tf file. That is our main.terraform Terraform file. So if there are more than one developer is working, they, then you cannot have a two state file of Terraform. So you need to have a single copy of a Terraform state file. 
So that's why uh, you need to store the Terraform state file remotely. And but th that means you need to store somewhere. So that's why we use S3 bucket because uh, AWS has provided a really good uh, support or Terraform has a really good uh, support for S3 bucket. So this is how you're gonna uh, share uh, this Terraform state file with other fellow developers so that they are also in sync with the same Terraform state file. Now we have discussed the importance of a Terraform remote state file when we are working with a multiple developers or you're working in a team. The next question comes like if you have taken some days off and you are not working on your project then how you're gonna pull the latest changes which has happened in your absence and for that Terraform provides a one more feature that is Terraform state pull command and with the help of this pull command you can pull all the latest changes which has happened in your absence and you can get those information onto your local workspace of your Terraform. So Terraform state pull command is a very similar command to the SVN pull or git pull command. So with the help of SVN pull or git pull command, you bring all the latest changes which has been done by other teams onto your local system so that your code is up to date. So similarly, Terraform state pull command will help you to update your local Terraform state information. So let's head back to uh, desktop again and see how to use that command. This is my workspace and the command which I'm going to run is terraform state pull. And remember, we have already started our EC2 instance and we have already stored the state file remotely. So here you can see uh, it has pulled all the information related to terraform state file, which we have stored remotely. So that contains all the information about our EC2 instance and uh, that you can verify from here. If you look here, then this is the AMI. And this is the EC2 uh, instance that is running on an EU central. And you can copy the AMI uh, just in case. I'll just scroll it down again over here. Copy it from here. Go to your main.tf file and control F and find it. So here you can see. So this is how you can pull the information back uh, which has been stored on a Terraform state file using the Terraform state pull command. And similarly, uh, if you follow this guide, which I'll also share into the description section. So here you will find a Terraform state push command also. But this Terraform state push command is uh, really uh, like uh, not a good practice because you might uh, destroy some of the other team member changes because Terraform state push gonna update the Terraform state file. And once you update the Terraform state file without knowing other team member changes or without knowing the gravity of the situation, then it might uh, destroy quite a lot of things. So Terraform provides a Terraform state push command, but it is not recommended to use it. So, but just to know you uh, that Terraform state push command is also uh, existing there. So you can use the Terraform state push command also. So this is the guide. So whatever I have discussed uh, during this session is available onto this guide. So you can follow this gui gui guide uh, whenever you feel feel like it. I hope you liked today's session on a Terraform state file. And if you are just new to the Terraform or you're just getting started with the Terraform, then I'll put the link of my playlist of my previous Terraform session video into the description section. So feel free to go through those Terraform session. And if you have any questions or doubts, then please put down into the comment section and I'll try to get back to you. So till then, see you into the next session of a Terraform or maybe DevOps. Till then, bye bye and take care.